I couldn't believe my eyes. There he was, my husband Dan, locked in an embrace with some young woman on our kitchen counter. The grocery bag slipped from my hands, clattering to the floor. What the hell is going on here? I demanded, my voice shaking with fury. The woman smirked at me. I thought you were out of town. Dan quickly pulled away from her, panic spreading across his face. Kate, you should have told me you were coming back early. I felt like the wind had been knocked out of me. How could he act so nonchalant about being caught cheating in our own home? The woman hopped off the counter, not even bothering to cover up her state of undress. I'll leave you two lovebirds to sort this out, she said with a wink before sauntering past me out the front door. Dan ran a hand through his disheveled hair. Kate, listen, I can explain. Explain what? I cut him off. How you've been screwing some hussy behind my back, in our bed? He flinched at my harsh words. It's not like that. It just happened. A hysterical laugh burst from my lips. It just happened? Are you kidding me right now? Dan took a step towards me, arms outstretched in a placating gesture. Baby, please, let's talk about this. But I couldn't bear to be near him, not after witnessing his ultimate betrayal with my own eyes. I snatched my car keys off the hook and stormed out without another word, desperate to put as much distance between us as possible. My mind was spinning out of control as I drove aimlessly. How could Dan do this to me, to us? After nearly a decade of marriage, memories of our life together assaulted me. Our chance meeting in college, falling deliriously in love, the day he got down on one knee, I choked back a sob. Had it all been a lie? By the time I pulled up at Jenny's place, I was an utter wreck. She took one look at my red-rimmed eyes and pulled me into a fierce hug. Oh, Kate, what happened? I could only shake my head, words failing me. Eventually, the whole sordid tale tumbled out between hiccuping sobs. Jenny's face darkened with rage, and she squeezed my hands tightly. That lying bastard, she growled. Don't worry, we'll make him pay for this. He messed with the wrong woman. Her conviction steadied me, allowing a glimmer of strength to shine through my despair. Perhaps there was a way to fight back against Dan's betrayal. Jenny was right. He would regret the day he ever took me for granted. I must have sat there for hours, staring blankly at the wall, as memories from my marriage with Dan flickered through my mind like an old movie reel. How could someone I loved and trusted so completely shatter my world into a million pieces? You need to eat something. Jenny said gently, placing a plate of toast in front of me. I shook my head, my stomach churning with nausea. At least have some water, then. I took a few sips from the glass, if only to appease her. Jenny had been a godsend, letting me crash at her place after walking in on that horrific scene. I don't know what I would have done without her steadying presence. Do you want to talk about it? She asked carefully. I laughed bitterly. What's there to say? My husband turned out to be a lying, cheating scumbag. Kate, Jenny wrapped a comforting arm around my shoulders. I'm so sorry you're going through this. If there's anything I can do. Unless you can turn back time and stop Dan from being an unfaithful prick, I don't think there's much anyone can do. She gave my arm a gentle squeeze. For what it's worth, he never deserved you. I always thought he was kind of a pompous ass, if I'm being honest. I let out a watery chuckle. I guess remembering how Dan used to get on Jenny's nerves with his constant bragging about work accomplishments no one cared about. Looking back, there were so many little warning signs that he was becoming selfish and arrogant. I was just too blind to see them. You know, when we first met in college, he was so charming and sweet, I reminisced. He'd leave these cute little notes in my textbooks, surprising me with chocolate-covered strawberries on our study dates. Jenny made a gagging sound. Please, spare me the gory details of your once nauseating love life. I swatted her arm, feeling a bit lighter. Hey, you asked. We fell into a comfortable silence, each lost in our own thoughts. My mind kept drifting back to that terrible moment of discovery. Dan wrapped around some faceless woman, their tangled bodies leaving no doubt as to what sort of sordid act they'd been engaged in. White-hot anger flared in my chest. He's going to pay for this, Jen, I said through gritted teeth. I don't care what it takes. That son of a bitch is going to get exactly what he deserves. Jenny's expression turned fierce. Don't worry. We'll make sure of it. He messed with the wrong girls. A twisted sense of satisfaction unfurled within me. 
Dan had made the biggest mistake of his life when he decided to throw away nearly a decade of marriage for some cheap fling. And by the time I was through with him, he'd be begging for forgiveness. Just when I thought my life couldn't get any more chaotic, I got a frantic call from my sister. Dad had suffered a bad fall and was being rushed to the hospital. I raced over, my mind mercifully distracted from thoughts of Dan's betrayal. Dad was lying pale and unconscious in the emergency room when I arrived. The doctors explained he'd taken a nasty tumble down the stairs and sustained a severe head injury. They needed to run more tests, but the prognosis wasn't looking good. Over the next few agonizing days, Dad drifted in and out of consciousness. When he was lucid, he didn't seem to recognize any of us. The doctors warned there could be lasting brain damage from the trauma. I felt utterly helpless watching my once vibrant father deteriorate before my eyes. Finally, they discharged him. But, but with strict round-the-clock care instructions, that would be impossible for my sister to manage alone with her two young kids. I didn't even hesitate before volunteering to be his primary caretaker. With everything so freshly imploded with Dan, it was a relief to focus my energy on something other than my own shattered heart. Are you sure about this, Kate? My sister asked worriedly as we got Dad settled at home. This is going to be a lot of work. I forced a smile, pushing aside my doubts. Of course, Dad would do the same for us. And so I dove headfirst into the gruelingly difficult role of caring for my partially incapacitated father. Feeding, bathing, administering medications, it was utterly draining, both physically and emotionally. My once tidy home quickly descended into chaos and disarray. Not that Dan seemed to notice her care. "'You've let this place go to shit,' he muttered one evening as he shoved past me, his nose wrinkling in distaste at the pile of soiled towels in the corner. "'I'm going out.' My ire flared, but I bit back the heated retort hovering on my lips. I was simply too exhausted to expend more energy on him right now. If he wanted to slink off to meet his little hussy, so be it. In a way— his negligence was almost preferable to having him underfoot and making snide comments about my care for Dad that would inevitably ignite bitter arguments. At least this way there was one less person I had to worry about. As the months dragged on in a relentless cycle of mundane caretaking tasks, I started to see Dan's disinterest for what it truly was, selfishness and a callous indifference for anyone's needs but his own. Somewhere along the way, the man I fell in love with had become an utterly deplorable human being. One night, Dad shocked me by having one of his semi-lucid moments. "'You're such a good girl, Katie,' he murmured, patting my hand weakly. "'I don't know what I'd do without you.' I felt tears prick my eyes at the rare moment of tenderness. "'Don't worry, Dad, I'm not going anywhere,' his brow furrowed slightly. "'But what about Dan? He's lucky to have a wife like you.' A melancholic look crossed his face, or at least he should realize how lucky he is. The words twisted like a knife in my gut. If only Dad knew the awful truth about his precious son-in-law's misdeeds. I forced a reassuring smile, not wanting to shatter his fragile peace of mind. Don't worry about Dan, I said quietly. In that moment, I made a vow to myself, no matter what it took, that sorry excuse for a man would face the consequences of his despicable actions. If it was the last thing I did, I would make sure he got what he deserved. Months ticked by as I remained holed up at my dad's house, my entire world revolving around his care routine. Bathing, feeding, administering medications, the tasks became numbingly familiar. I tried not to think too much about the chaos my own life had devolved into. Dan's visits grew increasingly sporadic. Sometimes weeks would go by without me laying eyes on him. Not that I was complaining— his presence only seemed to agitate Dad with his perpetual scowls and huffs of annoyance. "'Where's that sorry son-in-law of mine?' Dad would grumble whenever Dan was a no-show. "'Out gallivanting around, I'll bet.' I brushed it off with a non-committal mumble, not having the heart to reveal the sordid truth. Let Dad cling to his antiquated notions about marriage and family for as long as he could." When Dan did bother showing up, it was solely to raid the fridge and complain about the state of the house. "'This place is a pigsty,' he groused one evening, wrinkling his nose at the pile of dirty towels. "'Why don't you clean up a bit?' White-hot rage lanced through me, as if single-handedly caring for my ailing father while he was off doing God knows what wasn't enough. 
If the mess bothers you so much, be my guest and tidy up, I bit out. Dan snorted derisively. That's women's work. The casual misogyny of his remark struck me like a physical blow. I opened my mouth to let loose a blistering retort, but Dad chose that moment to call out for me weakly. Coming, Dad! I managed to grit out, turning on my heel and storming off before I said something I might regret. Later that night, as I massaged feeling back into my aching hands, Dad fixed me with those roomy eyes that still shone with disturbing lucidity at times. Dan's a real piece of work, isn't he? He said frankly. I always figured he took you for granted, but this is something else. My breath caught in my throat as I studied the drawn face of the proud, robust man he once was. Had he deduced Dan's perfidy on some subconscious level, the thought was almost too horrible to bear. Yes. Yes, well— I swallowed hard against the lump forming in my throat. Some men just don't realize how fortunate they are, Dad grunted in ironic agreement. Ain't that the truth? You deserve so much better than that, Katie. Tears burned my eyes as I squeezed his withered hand tightly. If only he knew the full, sickening extent of it all, the utter disrespect and humiliation Dan had subjected me to, but I wouldn't burden my sweet, ailing father with such ugliness. Not when he had more than enough troubles weighing on his fragile mind and body. No, there would be a reckoning for Dan's unforgivable sins soon enough. I could feel it simmering in my very bones like a primal force of nature waiting to be unleashed. He would atone for every last torment, every callous slight and indignity. I would make sure of it, or my name wasn't Kate Turner. After, after months of being Dad's sole caretaker, I was running on fumes. The doctor said he was stable enough for me to get a short respite, so I decided to head home for a few days to recharge. As I pulled into the driveway, an unfamiliar car was parked haphazardly on the lawn. Odd, Dan never mentioned having company over. I grabbed my bag from the trunk, too exhausted to ponder it much, and let myself inside with the spare key. The sound of raucous laughter immediately put me on edge. That definitely wasn't Dan's voice. Stealing myself, I followed the noise into the kitchen, and stopped dead in my tracks. There was Dan, looking quite at home with a scantily clad woman draped all over him as they giggled like misbehaving teenagers. The grocery bags slipped from my numb grasp, clattering loudly to the floor. The woman's head whipped around, eyes widening almost comically when she noticed me. Oh, shit! Dan, however, barely reacted, almost like he'd been caught doing this before. Maybe he had. Kate, I can explain, he started, trying to extricate himself from the woman's hold. But I was already seeing red. Explain what? I snarled, cutting him off. How you've been screwing this, this hussy behind my back in our own damn bed? He flinched at my harsh words. Good. Baby, it's not what it looks like. I barked out a harsh laugh, cutting off whatever bullshit excuse was about to tumble from his lying mouth. Don't you baby me, you piece of garbage! The woman finally seemed to get the hint, casually writing her clothes as she slid off the counter. I'll leave you two lovebirds to sort this out. She purred with a daring wink. My hands clenched into white-knuckled fists, desperately fighting the urge to lunge at her. Dan didn't even spare her a glance as she sauntered past, already turning those sickening puppy-dog eyes on me. Kate, please, we need to talk about this calmly. Calmly? I echoed in disbelief. You want to talk calmly after I just caught you dicking around with some random slut? Dan visibly bristled at my crass language, though it was nothing compared to the obscenities swirling through my mind. Don't talk like that, he snapped. You're better than this. The hypocrisy of his words made me see red all over again, like he had Ed any right to judge me after his wanton infidelity. Snatching my car keys off the hook, I whirled on my heel and stormed for the front door before I did something I might regret. Dan scrambled after me, still babbling nonsensical pleas, but I tuned him out with ease. One thing was crystal clear in that moment. Our marriage was over. Finished. Done. He could beg and grovel all he wanted, but nothing would ever make me trust that lying snake again. I threw the car into drive and peeled out of there like a bat out of hell, tears of rage and humiliation stinging my eyes. How could he do this to me? To us? After nearly a decade of marriage and everything we'd been through, my mind kept cycling back to that repulsive image of him and that woman, intimate in ways that should have been reserved solely for me. I slammed my palm against the steering wheel, letting out a guttural scream of anguish. 
Well, two could play at that game. If Dan thought he could stamp all over my heart and get away with it, he had another thing coming. By the time I pulled up to Jenny's place, I was shaking with fury and an unsettling sense of determination. She took one look at my face and immediately ushered me inside. Tell me everything, she said once I was settled on her couch, placing a steaming mug of tea in my hands. I didn't hold back, recounting every single agonizing detail from start to bitter finish. Throughout it all, Jenny's expression grew progressively more thunderous. That lying sack of shit, she growled once I finally trailed off. We can't let him get away with this. She squeezed my hand fiercely. Don't worry, bestie. We're going to make him pay dearly for what he did to you. That bastard messed with the wrong woman. A mirthless smile tugged at my lips as our shared fury galvanized into a single-minded purpose. Dan thought he'd won by cheating on me so flagrantly. Well, he was about to learn the hard way that hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. I crashed at Jenny's place that night, too distraught to even consider going back to the house I had once called home. Sleep eluded me as images of Dan's betrayal played on a sickening loop in my mind's eye. Jenny tried her best to console me, alternating between gentle words of reassurance and furious rants about what a lying, cheating scumbag Dan was. As much as her anger resonated with my own, it didn't dull the sting of heartbreak shredding my insides. That miserable prick doesn't deserve a single tear from you, she declared over breakfast, stabbing a fork full of eggs with excessive force. We need to figure out how to make him pay for this. I rubbed my throbbing temples, the thought of vengeance doing little to lift my spirits at the moment. And do what, Jen? It's not like I can take him to court over an affair. Maybe not, she allowed. But we can certainly make his life a living hell until he comes groveling for forgiveness. The idea held a certain vindictive appeal, I had to admit. After the fresh trauma Dan inflicted, the thought of him suffering even a fraction of my anguish scratched that primal itch for retribution. Okay. I said slowly. I'm listening. A feral grin split Jenny's face as she launched into a dizzying array of increasingly over-the-top revenge schemes, everything from airing his dirty laundry on social media to slashing his tires or egging his car. While cathartic, most of her ideas towed the line of illegal. Those are all terrible plans that will just land us in jail, I pointed out dryly once she'd run out of steam. We need to think smarter, not crazier. Jenny threw her hands up in exasperation. Well, I'm all ears if you've got a better idea. Worrying my lower lip, I watched her absent-mindedly fiddle with the ring on her finger, an ostentatious diamond that her husband could ill afford on his modest salary. A light bulb went off in my head. What if we hit him where it'll really hurt, I said slowly. His money and reputation— she cocked a questioning brow but said nothing as I rapidly filled her in on my half-formed plan. By the time I finished, Jenny was practically vibrating with sadistic glee. Oh, this is going to be perfect, she crowed. Dan won't know what hit him. I squeezed her hand tightly, a resolved calm settling over me. He's about to learn that betraying me was the biggest mistake of his life. Over the next couple days, we got to work, laying the groundwork for my meticulously plotted revenge scheme. The first step was hiring a private investigator to dig up every last shred of proof documenting Dan's sordid affair. Don't stop until you have enough evidence to bury that scumbag, I instructed the brusque older man Jenny found. He grunted in affirmation, already snapping pictures of the sleazy motel Dan liked to rendezvous with his mistress at. Don't you worry, lady. I'll make sure he can't wriggle his way out of this one. With the P.I. on the case, the next move was identifying the other woman. I felt a grim sense of satisfaction when Jenny's internet sleuthing revealed the little harlot's name to be Laura Whitley, daughter of John Whitley, one of the wealthiest businessmen in our city. Ooh, this is going to be good, Jenny cackled as she pulled up a photo, a pouting blonde with ridiculous duck lips who couldn't have been older than twenty-two or twenty-three. Just wait until Daddy finds out his little princess is a home-wrecking whore. A hard knot of resolution formed in my gut. Dan had made his bed, and now it was time to lie in it. He and his childish mistress were about to learn firsthand why hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. With the evidence against Dan finally compiled into a thick dossier courtesy of the private investigator, 
it was time to set the end game of my revenge plot into motion. You sure you want to go through with this? Jenny asked, eyeing the file apprehensively. Once we pull this trigger, there's no going back. I felt no such hesitation as I gave her a resolute nod. Dan brought this on himself the second he decided to cheat. He's going to face the consequences, no matter how severe. After attempting to call John Whitley's office several times with no luck, we decided a more personal touch was required. Loading up in Jenny's car, we headed across town to the absurdly opulent Whitley estate. The snooty gatekeeper tried waving us off at first, clearly unimpressed by our determination. But Jenny smoothly name-dropped Whitley's wayward daughter, and we were promptly ushered through to the palatial mansion beyond the gates. My insides twisted nervously as we stepped into the cavernous marble foyer. What if Whitley didn't believe us about Laura's affair? Or worse, what if he simply didn't care? This entire plan hinged on him being outraged enough by his daughter's indiscretion to take decisive action. A liveried butler appeared to escort us to Whitley's study, his expression giving nothing away. The heavy oak door swung open to reveal a regally furnished space lined with bookshelves, and one very intimidating older man seated behind an ornate desk. John Whitley cut an imposing figure with his tailored suit and severe salt-and-pepper hair. His piercing gaze swept over us dismissively as we settled into the chairs across from him. I was told you have some important information regarding my daughter, he stated without preamble, steepling his fingers. Well, I don't have all day. Squaring my shoulders, I laid out the file containing all the damning photographic proof and detailed logs of Dan's salacious hotel meetups with Laura. I didn't mince words as I explained how she had callously shattered my marriage in pursuit of her sordid affair with my husband. To his credit, Whitley maintained an infuriatingly stoic demeanor throughout. Though his jaw ticked almost imperceptibly as I recounted walking in on the two tangled together like horny teenagers. I see, he murmured once I'd finished, flipping through the damaging evidence with a critical eye. And what, pray tell, do you expect me to do about this unfortunate situation? White-hot anger lanced through me at his apparent indifference. "'Isn't it obvious?' I seethed. "'Your daughter is a shameless, lying homewrecker who helped destroy my marriage. There need to be consequences for that.' Jenny laid a restraining hand on my arm, shooting the patriarch a pointed look. "'With all due respect, sir, keeping this buried will only enable Laura's reckless behavior to continue unchecked. Surely, as her father, you want to impart some sense of morality?' Whitley's expression remained inscrutable for a long, agonizing moment. Then, clearing his throat, he reached for his phone and quickly dialed a number. "'Carter, get the Hampstead team ready to mobilize immediately,' he said crisply once the line connected. "'I want all vendors and partners notified that effective at the end of this week, our business relationship will be terminated.' A ghost of a smile tugged at his lips as he hung up and turned his hawkish gaze back on us. Thank you for bringing this unsavory matter to my attention. I assure you, my daughter's indiscretions will be handled with the appropriate severity. An almost gleeful shiver raced down my spine. If Whitley was taking such drastic measures to clean house at one of Dan's biggest corporate accounts, that could only mean one thing. He was about to lose his cushy, high-paying job over his despicable infidelity. Satisfaction sang through my veins as Jenny and I saw ourselves out of the mansion. The gears were finally in motion to ensure Dan paid for every last torment he'd put me through. As we climbed back into her car, my expression must have mirrored the sadistic glee coursing through me because Jenny reached over to squeeze my hand fiercely. Don't worry, bestie. This is only the beginning of making that douchebag suffer. A twisted smile stretched my lips as I watched the Whitley estate disappear in the rearview mirror. Oh, I'm counting on it. The look on Dan's face when we strode into that sleek corporate lobby was almost worth the anguish he'd put me through. Almost. His eyes widened comically at the sight of me, clearly not expecting me to be the one accompanying John Whitley's stone-faced security detail. I offered him a sweet smile that didn't reach my eyes. Hey there, honey. I said, relishing the way he flinched at the saccharine endearment. Surprised to see me? Dan opened and closed his mouth several times, his usual unflappable confidence deserting him. Kate, 
Mr. Whitley, what's going on here? The older man fixed him with a withering stare. I recently became aware of your utterly unacceptable dalliances with my daughter, Mr. Turner. Suffice it to say, I'm extremely displeased by your despicable conduct. If possible, Dan paled even further, a thin sheen of sweat blooming on his brow as the implication sank in. Good, let the utter fool squirm. Sir, I can assure you whatever you think is happening. Save your pathetic groveling, Whitley cut him off with a disdainful wave. You're being terminated from your position at Hampstead Enterprises, effective immediately. Any further business with my company and its partners is officially severed. A muscle ticked in Dan's jaw, the first hint of his long-buried temper slipping through that meticulously crafted veneer of nonchalance. With all due respect, you can't just fire me like that. Not without cause. The older man barked out a humorless laugh. You think I need cause after your sordid infidelity caused such embarrassment to my family? Don't delude yourself. Lawyers far costlier than you could ever afford have ensured this decision is unassailable. I had to choke back a burst of vindictive laughter at Dan's impotent scowl. For once the arrogant prick was receiving precisely what he deserved, a harsh dose of karmic retribution. Just then, a familiar blonde head bobbed into view. Laura strode up in a tiny dress that left nothing to the imagination, clearly angling to pour on the vapid charm. Her expression soured upon catching sight of me. "'Daddy, what's going on here?' she demanded in a simpering whine. "'Why are you letting this psycho cause a scene?' "'Enough, Laura,' Whitley snapped, making her flinch. "'Your utter lack of discretion has cost me dearly. As of today, you'll be cut off from any and all family resources and assets until you get your life in order.' The blonde's jaw dropped in a mask of over-exaggerated shock. You can't do that. I'll be ruined. You've done quite enough to ruin this family's reputation already, her father said coldly. Now, I suggest you gather what little dignity you have left and go. The police will be summoned if you linger. Her lower lip trembled petulantly, but a well-timed glare from the burly security guards had her slinking away with her tail between her legs. A lascivious smirk twisted my lips as Dan watched her go, his primary income and mistress ripped away in one fell swoop. I— He swallowed hard, the indignant mask finally shattering to reveal a broken, the pathetic excuse for a man. Kate, please, you have to understand. Understand what? I cut him off, meeting his hollow gaze with steely resolve. That you threw away nearly a decade of marriage and my unconditional love for a cheap fling with a vapid bimbo less than half your age? Dan flinched as if struck. Good. Let the truth sting. His fragile ego deserved to be shattered into a million pieces, just as thoroughly as he decimated my heart. Whitley motioned to his guards, and they began ushering Dan towards the exit without ceremony, but not before he cast me one last imploring look. You're right, he rasped hollowly. I should have told you I was coming back early. Enjoy your new life without everything you took for granted. A bitter smile tugged at my lips as I watched him being all but dragged out. After all his lies and betrayal, that pathetic excuse rang painfully hollow. As the door swung shut behind him, a weight finally lifted off my shoulders. Dan had been utterly stripped of his status, finances, job, every trapping that made up the pedestal he'd placed himself on above me. Justice had finally been served, in the most brutal and uncompromising way. And strangely, rather than the satisfaction I'd anticipated, I felt nothing but bone-deep wariness. It's over, I murmured to myself as Whitley placed a gruff hand on my elbow. Indeed, the older man replied, though it remains to be seen whether this harsh lesson will truly impart any wisdom on my wayward daughter. I shrugged him off eager to simply move on and escape the stifling tension that still hung in the air. Whatever Laura's fate, it hardly concerned me. Thank you for handling the Dan situation, I offered politely. I appreciate your assistance in making him face the consequences of his actions. A curt nod was my only answer as I turned on my heel and marched out of the building, leaving that sordid chapter of my life firmly behind closed doors. Would I ever be able to fully trust another man after this? Part of me wasn't sure if the effort was even worth attempting. But one thing was abundantly clear. The weak, simpering woman who'd allowed Dan's infidelity to destroy her sense of self-worth was gone forever. 
Whatever challenges still awaited, I would face them with my head held high and a newfound unshakable sense of independence. No longer would I ever let a man dictate my worth, my happiness, my entire existence. From this point on, I answered to no one but myself.